Starting from this video, we will work on an interesting project called Hogwarts Artifacts Online. Here is a story. The headmaster of Hogwarts School came to TCU Computer Science Department and requested a web application for managing their numerous magical artifacts and wizards. They already developed a front end using their spell Angular View Reactress. They only need us to get the backend down. Well, because they haven't learned the spell Spring Cindio. In return, he offered every TCU computer science student a free tour to Hogwarts. So let's go for it. Here, I use mind map to visualize all the requirements from the headmaster of Hogwarts school. So this is the entire product, the backend of Hogwarts Artifacts Online. It has three major modules, artifact, wizard, and user management. So let's expand it and see the features that we're gonna develop for this module. In artifact management, our system shall list all artifacts, shall show one artifact given an ID, shall add a new artifact to the collection, shall modify an existing artifact. Also, our system shall delete an artifact given an ID. It is very similar in the next module. But besides the CRUD or the CRUD, we also have one feature here is assign an artifact to a wizard. By the way, one artifact can only be assigned to one wizard. One wizard can have many artifacts. Now the last module, also very similar. We have CRUD, and besides those, we also have login. Because later on, we want to secure our application. For example, everyone can view all the artifacts, but only the logged in users can view all the users and all the wizards, for example. So it is very necessary to have a login. Now remember, we're only responsible for the backend or the server side. We're not responsible for the front end. For the front end, you can either use GSP or Timeleaf if you want, or use Angular, React, or Vue. So there are many choices for the front end. But in the back end, we're going to use Spring Boot to implement all those features and provide data in format of JSON to the front end, no matter what that is. OK, next, let's create a Spring Boot project in IntelliJ, and we're going to push it to GitHub. After that, we're going to create several issues. And each issue corresponds to one feature in this mind map. So let's get to it. Open IntelliJ. Create new project. And pick Spring Initializer. So SDK is 12, default, everything's good. Next. So our group is edu.tcu.cs. The artifact is Hogwarts Artifacts. Online. So it's a Maven. And by the way, you can pick either Maven or Gradle. Okay, so both are very good building tools, and we're using Maven. So packaging is jar, jar version is 8. Okay, now there are three choices 8, 11, and 14. Now the reason we don't have 12 or 13 is because Java 8 and Java 11, those are LTS, long term support. And Java 14 is the latest version. It was released like a couple of weeks ago. So that's why I have three choices. So pick 11. Later on, we can change it to 12 in my case. So version is good. Name is good. Description is changed to Hogwarts Artifacts Online. Okay, click Next. Now, this is an opportunity you can pick all the dependencies. So here are the dependencies we'll pick. So developer tools, we're going to pick Spring Boot Dev Tools. In web, we're going to pick Spring Web MVC. Since we're only providing the backend, so I'm not going to pick any template engines. Okay, remember, this is those are all server-side rendering technology, and we're not using those. We will use security, but for now, I'm not going to pick it. Okay, later on, I will manually add it to our project. Okay. And we definitely need SQL, 
because all the data are stored in a relational database. So I'm going to pick Sprint Data JPA. Now JPA stands for Java Persistence API. We're also going to use an in-memory database called H2. So that is, I don't have to install a database on my machine. It is in-memory. It is a built-in database with Sprint Boot. So that really speed up your development because you don't have to mess up with connecting to MySQL or Mongo and so on and so forth. Okay. Later on, when it's production ready, we can go to, for example, Oracle or MySQL or PostgreSQL and so on and so forth. As you can see, Sprint supports all the mainstream databases. We're not using Mongo. We're not using Redis. We're not using Elasticsearch. Okay. Messaging, we're not using uh, those MQs, uh, Kafka. Right? But I just want to show you that Spring Boot supports all of those. Now, Spring Cloud is very useful when you develop a microservice system. Okay, I guess that's all. Okay, we have DevTools, Web, and SQL. We have JPA and H2. Uh, that's all we need for now. Okay, next. Okay, looks good. Finish. Okay, so all the dependencies have been downloaded and installed in my project. Okay. And here is a standard project structure of a Maven project or a Spring Boot project in this case. I have logged into my GitHub account. So here I'm going to create a new repository on GitHub to hold my Hogwarts Artifacts Online project. So first, let me give it a name. Hogwarts. I'm going to leave description empty because it's optional. Make it public. Everything's good. So create repository. Okay, then let me toggle over to IntelliJ. This is a bare bone or empty Spring Boot project. Okay, so next we're going to push it to the remote repository. But first, let me create a readme file. It is always recommended to create a readme markdown file under your project. Okay, now next, let's make this directory a git repository because for now this is just a regular directory if i do git nothing happened okay because it's not a git repository so here i'm going to type git init okay now i'm on master branch so if i do git status now as you can see here we have many untracked files okay now by the way we do not want this one when we first create a Spring Boot project, by default, Spring Boot project has a git ignore. So double click, and I'm gonna put it there because this file is generated by Mac. I do not want to commit. Okay, now based on what ID you are using, here we're using idea, so those four files will be ignored. Okay, anyway, come down here, clean, and git add, and git status again, all right. And git commit initial commit. All right, now if I do git status, uh, working tree is clean. Okay, so this is just everything is locally. We haven't connect to the remote repository. So next, we're going to add a remote repository. Git remote add. Okay, origin. So let's go back to Chrome. Now you can pick HTTPS or SSH. Uh, I'm going to use SSH because I have already saved my SSH key in GitHub. Okay. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, I have included a link that explains how to use SSH to log in GitHub. Okay. So down here, I'm going to copy this and paste. All right. Next, we're going to push. Git push. The first time you push a branch, you should use dash u to set a upstream. Uh, then we're going to push origin master. Okay, 
push it to origin master. All right. We only push one uh, branch. Okay, we only have one branch here, of course. All right, branch master set up to track remote branch master from origin. Okay, good. So we can do git branch dash dash all, show both local and remote. Now, as you can see, now we're on local master branch, which is in this uh, green color. And the red color means this is a tracking branch. It's tracking the master branch at the remote side. Okay, and git status and everything is up to date. Okay, nothing to commit. So let's go back to Chrome and refresh. All right, now we got our first commit here. Okay, it's committed two minutes ago. Uh, if we click this first commit, as you can see, this is the initial commit. 